When it comes to World Series MVPs, there's some names that automatically come to your mind. Derek Jeter, Mariano Rivera, David Ortiz, Reggie Jackson, Bob Gibson, some of the best players of all time. Well, in today's video, we're not going to be talking about those guys. Instead, going to be focusing on some of the lesser known players. In fact, what I would call the worst players to ever win the World Series MVP. I've got 10 names for you. 10 players who I would consider to be the worst players to ever win the World Series MVP. Now, that being said, some of these players are still pretty good. They had decent Major League Baseball careers, but in terms of World Series MVPs, just simply the worst players that have won them. Now, I'm sure you could probably guess a few of the guys that will already make this list, but hey, stick around, see who's on here. There are some really interesting players that honestly I never even heard of that have won a World Series MVP. So if you guys are not yet subscribed to the channel, make sure you drop a sub so you don't miss out on any of the content coming at you all season long, even when baseball's done. I'm still talking baseball over here. You don't want to miss it. Get in the comments down below. Let me know who you think is the worst World Series MVP of all time, and make sure you're following me on all my social media, Giraffe Nick Mark. Links in description. Let's get started off with the 1959 World Series MVP, Larry Sherry. Yes, that's his real name. Larry Sherry. Yes, you heard that correct. Larry Sherry. Lawrence Sherry. Brother of Norm Sherry, who was even worse than Larry. But what's cool about Larry Sherry is he won his World Series MVP in his rookie season with the Dodgers. 23 years of age, 7-2 record with a 2.19 ERA in 23 appearances, 94 innings, a whip at 1.25. During that World Series, his only postseason appearance, he appeared in four games through 12 and two-thirds innings, got two saves, a .71 ERA, a whip at .789, he was unhittable. What's crazy is he only struck out five guys as well. Baseball was so different in the 50s and 60s. For his career, 11 seasons, a 3.67 ERA, just under 800 innings pitched, and a whip at 1.4. He finished his career with a B-War of 5.8. Larry Sherry, one of the best names, one of the worst World Series MVPs. For this next player, we're jumping all the way to 1978, where the World Series MVP that season was Bucky Dent of the New York Yankees. And Bucky Dent is kind of like a meme back in the day. Wasn't much of a player, but he won a World Series MVP and was even a three-time All-Star. Now, I know shortstop position was different back in the 70s and 80s, but Bucky Dent's numbers don't really translate across generations here. In that 1978 season, played in 123 games, five homers, 11 doubles, 40 RBIs, hitting 243 with a 286 on base, 317 slugging, 603 OPS. Yeah, they didn't really care about a lot of those numbers back then. He was there to play shortstop and maybe get a hit once in a while. Now, in that World Series where he won the MVP, Bucky Dent had quite the series. 10 for 24 with seven RBIs, 417 average, 440 on base, 458 slugging, 898 OPS. It's a really good series. It's why the Yankees were able to win the World Series. But for his career, he played 12 seasons, just got over 1,000 hits at 1114, career average of 247, on base 297, slugging 321, and OPS at 618. Of course, it's tough to compare old players to modern day, but right now, Bucky Dent just doesn't cut an OPS plus at 74 for his career, hence why he's on this video. He was a defensive first shortstop. Five years later, we got another one of our worst World Series MVPs, and that's going to be Rick Dempsey, who won the World Series MVP in 1983 with the Baltimore Orioles. Rick Dempsey, catcher, so you can just go out on a limb here and guess his numbers aren't going to be great. His 162 game average was 9 homers, 20 doubles, and a 666 OPS. Oh, that's the devil's number. That's bad. In that 1983 World Series, Rick Dempsey went off. He hit a home run, 4 doubles, 5 hits and 13 at-bats, a 385 average, 467 on base, 923 slugging, and a 1390 OPS. Those are pretty good numbers right there, but that's about as good as his numbers would ever get. In his 24 seasons of play, Rick Dempsey Dempsey had just over a thousand hits at 1093. He was basically a backup catcher for the entirety of his career. 233 average, 319 on base, 347 slugging, 666 OPS, like I said. Not much of a player, but 24 seasons, he got a World Series MVP, won two World Series, ended up being a pretty good career. Three years later, in one of the most magical World Series, we got Ray Knight winning the World Series MVP. Now, Ray Knight actually had some spurts of being a pretty decent player, but overall for his career, as the numbers evened out, he's going to get in this video as one of the worst. World Series MVPs, but he's actually probably one of the better players in this video. That 1986 World Series, as we know, Mets won it. Ray Knight was on the Mets, playing third base. And he had a pretty big hit in that series, I would say. In terms of the World Series in general, I mean, a fantastic series from Ray Knight. 9 for 23 with a home run, 5 RBIs. He had a double hit, 391 with a 440 on base, 565 slugging, 1,000 OPS. For his career, though, again, the numbers just kind of lackluster. Finished his career with a 271 average, 321 on base, 390 slugging, 711 OPS. So, like, he was actually a pretty decent player. Good bat the ball skills just didn't really have that pop and that's why you see a 160 
162 game average of nine homers and 29 doubles. He did have some seasons where he showed some promise, finished fifth in the MVP voting in 1979 and 14th in 86 with the Mets. But overall, Ray Knight, eh, one of the worst players to win World Series MVP. At the start of the 90s, the Blue Jays had a nice little run, and in 92, their World Series MVP was Pat Borders, who I think is going to be the worst player on this list. Pat Borders, catcher, what do you know? And he was basically a backup catcher for his entire career, except the few seasons with Toronto when they were really good, including that 92 season. In the World Series in 1992, Pat Borders might have played the best baseball of his career. He was 9 for 20, scoring two runs, three doubles, a homer, and three RBIs, hitting 450 with a 500 on base, 750 slugging, 1250 OPS. But again, that was about the best baseball he ever played. That 92 season was something special for him. Borders had a big home run in game four, which ended up being the difference maker in a 2-1 win over the Braves. Just getting big hits all over the place. He had 13 homers, 26 doubles, 53 RBIs, and a 676 OPS, which doesn't sound great, but it was one of the better years for him. He ended up playing 17 seasons in the majors, 831 hits, 69 home runs. Nice. Love that. A 253 average, 288 on base, 375 slugging, and a 663 OPS for an OPS plus of 77. Pat Borders was basically a backup catcher, but he got a World Series MVP. It's pretty awesome, honestly. 1997, the Florida Marlins coming out of nowhere, winning the World Series, and Levon Hernandez was their World Series MVP in his rookie season. Now, Levon Hernandez had actually a pretty solid Major League Baseball career, but not because of his performance per se, just because of his longevity. In his 17-year career, he amassed a B-War of about 30, which is a nice career. 17 years, 519 appearances, 4.44 ERA, a whip at 1.44, FIP at 4.4. What is with these .44s? This is unbelievable. But let's be honest, Levon Hernandez, again, the thing that made him valuable was that he was always there for you. But was he one of the best pitchers? No. And what's so confusing about Levon Hernandez is that in the 1997 World Series, he wasn't even that good. 13 and two-thirds innings. He had an ERA at 5.27. He somehow was 2-0, and oh, but again, wins. That's why they don't matter. He had a whip at 1.8. He gave up 15 hits. Walked 10 guys and only struck out seven. Gave up three home runs. Doesn't make any sense how he was the World Series MVP. And even when you go to the game logs, like, the World Series appearances weren't that great. But he won the World Series MVP. Probably the worst performing player to win one. One of the stronger players, though, in today's video in general for his career. The following year, the Yankees won the World Series. Series, which started their incredible streak, and their World Series MVP in 98 was Scott Brocious. Scott Brocious, you might remember the name, hit some big home runs. But as a player, eh, he was all right. He was fine. He was an average player, not one of the greats. That 1998 season was the only season he made an all-star team, and it was probably the best season of his career. 152 games, 19 homers, 34 doubles, 98 RBIs, 300 average, 371 on base, 472 slugging, 843 OPS. This was a guy who had streaks of being a pretty good player, and he had some success in Oakland too. That 98 World Series, he played really well against San Diego. 8 for 17 with 2 home runs, 6 RBIs, 471 average, 471 on base, 824 slugging, 1294 OPS. And of course, he had that big game three where he hit those two home runs. But overall for his career, Scott Brocious, again, just kind of a very okay player. 11 years, 1,001 hits, 141 home runs, 200 doubles, a 257 average, 323 on base, 422 slugging, 744 OPS. She gave him an OPS plus at 94. Just about an average player there at third base for the Yankees and the A's. And that's why he finds himself on today's video. Finally, into the 2000s, jumping all the the way to 2006, which is a cult classic World Series MVP, David Eckstein. Eckstein is one of the most memorable players, I feel like, of the 2000s, despite not really being that good. He was scrappy. He was five foot six, 170 pounds soaking wet, and the dude was gritty. And of course, he had that great World Series in 2006 with the Cardinals, where David Eckstein had a 364 average, 391 on base, 500 slugging, and 891 OPS for the series, eight for 22, scoring three runs, three doubles. How can you not love David Eckstein? Now, as a player, it wasn't great. I mean, even in his 2006, season. Never hit home runs. 35 in his 10-year career. 292 average, 350 on base, 344 slugging, and 694 OPS in 2006, which was an all-star season for him. And overall for his career in those 10 seasons, 1,400 hits, 280 average, 345 on base, 355 slugging, 701 OPS. He was a fun player. He was great. He was gritty. He was scrappy. But a 20.9 B-War for his career and just the fact that he really didn't do much besides like hit for a okay average. David Eckstein's clearly one of the worst players to win World Series MVP, but gotta love David Eckstein. I mean, who doesn't love this guy? He's a folk legend. And then not to lay it on thick here for the Cardinals, but let's go ahead and jump to 2011 where we got another folk hero World Series MVP, and that's going to be David Freeze. David Freeze actually had a pretty good Major League Baseball career, but again, in the grand scheme of like World Series MVPs and when I need a round number, well, David Freeze is the guy that's going to get on this list. Probably had one of the best World Series performances of all time with the St. Louis Cardinals. In that 2011 World Series, he was 8 for 23 with some big hits, including that huge hit against the Rangers in the World Series. A homer, three doubles, a triple, 8 for 23, three 48 average, 464 on base, 696 slugging, 1160 OPS. He got the big triple. He got the big home run. He carried the Cardinals in that 2011 World Series. They don't win it without him. The Rangers were one out away, but David Free stepped up to the plate and he made a 
difference. He was a beast, and like I said, his career was pretty okay, actually. 11 seasons, just over 1,000 hits, averaged about 15 homers and 25 doubles a year when he did play for a full season, 277 average, 351 on base, 423 slugging, 775 OPS, OPS plus at 112. Very, very strong career, but again, in terms of World Series MVPs, one of the worst players to do it, but also probably one of the best of this video. And then for the last and final player in today's video, we're looking at the 2018 World Series MVP with the Boston Red Sox, Mr. Steve Pierce, University of South Carolina Game Cop, always representing. Steve Pierce's World Series performance in 2018 was pretty amazing. While he was only 4 for 12 in the series, three of those hits were home runs, and the other hit was a double. Eight RBIs, 333 batting average, 500 on base, 1167 slugging, and 1667 OPS. Yeah, while he may not have had a lot of hits, the hits counted, and they were hugely impactful. Game tying homer, bases clearing double. Steve Pierce, whenever there was a big moment, seemingly stepped up to the plate, including the two homers in game five. For his career, though, Steve Pierce was a platoon. He was a journeyman. He wasn't really this everyday kind of player. He only played in 100 games more than once in his career, and that was in 2014 with the Orioles. To be fair, fantastic season, but you get the gist. In his 13-year career, Steve Pierce had 572 hits, 91 homers, 131 doubles, hitting 254 to 332 on base, 440 slugging, 772 OPS, OPS plus at 108. He had a good bat against left-handed pitching. He could fill in as a backup platoon depth piece, but he was never the best player on your roster. He just happened to go off in 2018 for the Red Sox and have one of the best World Series performances of all time. So those are the 10 worst World Series MVPs of all time, in my opinion. I'd love to know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Who do you think was the worst player to win it? Drop a like on the video if you did enjoy it, as well as subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the content coming at you. Follow me on all my social media, Giraffe Neck Mark, links in the description. And that's where I'll wrap it up. We got more World Series postseason content coming at you here in the next few weeks, so make sure you're around to see that kind of stuff. And you know the drill from here on out. YouTube recommends you watch this video. This is my most recent upload. Click through those if you have not yet seen them. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all tomorrow for another video. Peace out.